Welcome back everyone to our chapter book read along of James and the Giant Peach by Roald Dahl. Today we are reading chapters 19 through 21, but I want to do a quick review because we are getting right into the middle of the book and I want to make sure you all remember what has happened so far. So, if you want, you can pause the video and do a quick review with those who you're watching this with. And then, I'll do my review. So, James Henry Trotter is our main character. He lives with his not-so-nice aunt, Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker. And they are mean to him and just not great people. So, he is pretty sad. And a gentleman comes with some magic for him. And as he's running to go use the magic to make his life better, he trips and drops all of the magic into the ground and it goes into a peach tree that grows this giant, giant peach as big as a small house. So Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker use it as an opportunity to make some money. But in the evening when James is cleaning up, he finds a tunnel and goes into the peach and meets his new friends. Mr. Centipede, Miss Ladybug, Mr. Grasshopper, Miss Glowworm, Miss Spider, Mr. Earthworm, and the Silkworm. So, we just got through all the tumbling down the hill. They got away from Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker and went for a not very fun roller coaster ride through the English countryside and ended up in the ocean. Now, they were all a little bit scared at first because how are they gonna survive in the ocean? Most of them can't swim. What are they gonna eat? Well, James said, we're fine. The peach is floating. A ship will come by and we'll talk to them. And we are literally floating on food. So they all ate this delicious peach and are ready for the next step in their adventure, as are we. Let's get started on chapter 19. Look, cried the centipede just as they were finishing their meal. Look at that funny thin black thing gliding through the water over there. They all swung around to look. There are two of them, said Miss Spider. There's lots of them, said the ladybug. What are they? asked the earthworm, getting worried. They must be some kind of fish, said the old green grasshopper. Perhaps they have come along to say hello. They're sharks, cried the earthworm. I bet you anything you like that they are sharks and they have come along to eat us up. What absolute rot, the centipede said but his voice seemed suddenly to have become a little shaky and he wasn't laughing. I am positive they're sharks, said the earthworm. I just know they're sharks. And so in actual fact did everyone else, but they were too frightened to admit it. There was a short silence. They all peered down anxiously at the sharks who were cruising slowly round and round the peach. Just assuming that they are sharks, the centipede said, there still any, can't possibly be any danger if we're way up here. But even as he spoke, one of those thin black fins suddenly changed direction and came cutting swiftly through the water, right up to the side of the peach itself. The shark paused and stared up at the company with his small evil eyes. Go away, they shouted. Go away, you filthy beast. Slowly, almost lazily, the shark opened its mouth, which was big enough to have swallowed a permbolator, and made a lunge at the peach. They all watched aghast, and now, as though at a signal from the leader, all the other sharks came swimming in toward the peach, and they clustered around it and began to attack it ferociously. There must have been 20 or 30 of them, at least, all pushing and fighting and lashing their tails and turning the water into a froth. Panic and pandemonium broke out immediately on top of the peach. Oh, we're finished now, 
cried Miss Spider, wringing her feet. They will eat us up the whole peach, then there'll be nothing left for us to stand on, and they're slaughter on us. She's right, shouted the ladybug. We are lost forever. Oh, I don't want to be eaten, wailed the earthworm, but they will take me first because of the fact that I'm so fat and juicy and I have no bones. Is there nothing we can do? asked the ladybug, appealing to James. Surely you can think of a way out of this? Suddenly, they were all looking at James. Think, Miss Spider said. Think, James, think. Come on, said the centipede. Come on, James. There must be something we can do. Their eyes waited upon him, tense, anxious, pathetically hopeful. Chapter 20. There is something that I believe we might try, James Henry Trotter said slowly. I'm not saying it'll work. Tell us, cried the earthworm. Tell us quick. We'll try anything you say, said the centipede. But hurry, hurry, hurry. Be quiet and let the boy speak, said the ladybug. Go on, James. They all moved a little closer to him. There was a long-ish pause. Go on, they cried frankly frantically. Go on! And all the time while they were waiting, they could hear the sharks thrashing around in the water below them. It was enough to make anyone frantic. Come on, James, the ladybug said, coaxing him. I, I'm afraid it's no good after all, James murmured, shaking his head. I, I'm terribly sorry. I forgot. We don't have any string. We need hundreds of yards of string to make this work. What sort of string? asked the old green grasshopper sharply. Any sort, so long as it's strong. Oh, but my dear boy, that's exactly what we do have. We've got all you want. How? Where? The silkworm, cried the old green grasshopper. Didn't you ever notice the silkworm? She's still downstairs. She never moves, just lies there sleeping all day long. But we can easily wake her up and make her spin. And what about me, may I ask? said Miss Spider. I can spin just as well as any silkworm. What's more, I can spin patterns. Can you make enough between you? asked James. As much as you want. And quickly? Of course, of course. Would it be strong? The strongest there is. It's as thick as your finger. But why? What are we going to do? We are going to lift this peach clear out of the water. James announced firmly. You're mad, cried the earthworm. It's our only chance. The boy's crazy. He's joking. Go on, James, the ladybug said gently. How are you going to do it? Sky hooks, I suppose, jeered the centipede. Seagulls, James answered calmly. The place is full of them. Look up there. They all looked up and saw a great mass, mass of seagulls, wheeling around and around in the sky. I'm going to take a long silk string and I'm going to loop one end of it around a seagull's neck and I'm going to tie it to the other end of the stem of the peach. He pointed to the peach stem, which they were standing up like a short, thick mast in the middle of the deck. Then I'm going to let another seagull do the same thing and another and another. Ridiculous, they shouted. Absurd. Puppycock. Balderdash. Madness! And the old green grasshopper said, How can a few seagulls lift an enormous thing like this up in the air? And all of us as well. It would take hundreds, thousands. There's no shortage of seagulls, James answered. Look for yourself. We'll probably need 400, 500, 600, maybe even a thousand. I don't know. I shall simply go on hooking them up to the stem until we have enough to lift us. They'll be bound to lift us in the end. It's like balloons. You give someone enough balloons to hold, I mean really enough, then up he goes. And seagulls has far more lifting power than a balloon. If only we have the time to do it. If only we weren't sunk first by those awful sharks. You're absolutely off your head, said the earthworm. How on earth do you suppose to get a loop of string around a seagull's neck? I'm suppose you're going to fly up there yourself and catch it the boy's dotty said the centipede let him finish said the ladybug 
Go on, James. How would you do it? With bait. Bait? What sort of bait? With a worm, of course. Seagulls love worms. Didn't you know that? And luckily for us, we have here the biggest, fattest, pinkest, juiciest earthworm in the world. You can stop right there, the earthworm said sharply. That's quite enough. Go on, the other said, beginning to grow interested. Go on. The seagulls have already spotted him, James continued. That's why there's so many of them circling around. But they daren't come down here to get him while the rest of us are here standing. So this is what, stop, cried the earthworm. Stop, 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 I won't have to, I won't have it. I refuse, I, I. Be quiet, said the centipede. Mind your own business. I like that. My dear earthworm, you're going to be eaten anyway. So what difference does it make if it's sharks or seagulls? I won't do it. Why don't we hear the plan first, said the old green grasshopper. I don't give a hoot what the plan is, cried the earthworm. I am not going to be pecked to death by a bunch of seagulls. You will be a martyr, said the centipede. You shall be respected for the rest of your life. So will I, and your name will be in all the newspapers. Earthworm gives his life to save his friends. But he won't have to give his life. Now listen to me. This is what we'll do. Why, it's absolutely brilliant, cried the old green grasshopper. Oh, sorry. Chapter 21. Why, it's absolutely brilliant, cried the old green grasshopper when James explained his plan. The boy's a genius, the centipede announced. Now I can keep my boots on after all. Oh, I shall be pecked to death, wailed the poor earthworm. Of course he won't. I will, I know I will, and I won't even be able to see them coming because I have no eyes. James went over and put an arm gently around the earthworm's shoulders. I won't let them touch you, he said. I promise I won't, but we have got to hurry. Look down there. There were more sharks than ever now around the peach. The water was boiling with them. There must have been 90 or 100 at least. And to the travelers up on top, it certainly seemed as though the peach were sinking lower and lower into the water. Action stations, James shouted. Jump to it. There's not a moment to lose. He was the captain now, and everyone knew it. They would do whatever he told them. All hands below deck except Earthworm, he ordered. Yes, yes, they said e eagerly as they scuttled to the tunnel entrance. Come on, let's hurry. And you, centipede, James shouted, hop downstairs and get that silkworm to earth to work at once. Tell her to spin as she's never spun before. Our lives depend on it. And the same applies to you, Miss Spider. Hurry down, start spinning. Oop, my pages are stuck. No, they are not stuck. That's it. That's chapter 21. We'll have to see if James's plan works out next time. So I have a couple questions. Now that they are ex at sea, they experience a new problem. What is this problem? There's sharks, sharks trying to attack the peach and eat it. So what is James's plan and who is involved in the plan? So James is going to lasso a bunch of seagulls and lift the peach out of the water. He needs silkworm and my spider to spin all the rope and silk and spider spindles. I don't know, sorry. That they can so he can catch all of the seagulls. But to get the seagulls there, who does he need? Mr. Earthworm as bait. Bait is when you use something to catch something else. So if you are trying to catch a fish, you put a little bit of bait, some fish food on your hook. 
why do you think they look toward James to solve this problem? What do you think? Well, he solved the last few problems, didn't he? He was the one who thought of the food and the fact that they're going to be okay in the ocean because they're just bobbing up and down. They'll be fine until sharks showed up. So we kind of talked about it, but I want you to describe in detail the plan that James has to get away from the sharks. He is going to use Mr. Earthworm as bait to get as many seagulls as he can and then use rope from Silkworm and Miss Spider to catch them and tie them to the stem of the peach and then they're gonna fly out of the water. Who becomes the captain of the peach? James does. He has all the ideas and they are listening to him because they know that this will work. It's going to take a lot of seagulls, but it will work. All right, we have a few vocab words for today. Pandemonium, coaxing, poppycock, and martyr. So pandemonium is when something is distressing and it's crazy. There's people running everywhere. It's really busy. This time there was pandemonium because they were all scared. So they were running about and yelling and screaming. Coaxing is getting something to come out, right? Or come to you. So when you want maybe a bunch of seagulls to come, you're gonna coax them with a giant earthworm. Poppycock! It means, that's silly, that's ridiculous, this is nuts, it's poppycock. And the last one is martyr. So a martyr is someone who sacrifices either something or themselves for a cause. So earthworm thought he was going to have to be eaten by seagulls to save them all, but James has a plan. He's not gonna be eaten. And we will find out what James's plan exactly is and if it works next time. So thank you so much for joining me and we will see you next time with more James and the Giant Peach. Bye everyone.